This is the Dr. Paul Show, a woman's personal guide to understanding men. And now, here is Dr. Paul. Hi, this is Dr. Paul. Welcome to the Dr. Paul Show. We got a show for you tonight. We have a new advertiser, True Lock. We're going to have a man on at the end of the show telling us all about it. You need it. I need it. Everybody needs it at a price you can afford. It's all about your it's called security safeguard on the internet as well as on the computer and it is called safeguard and it truly will lock out those people that you need to have locked out i will start with a letter i will start with a letter that i received today now be prepared because you won't like it <clears throat> dear dr paul i want your opinion I want you to know that this was on the internet today. Quote, this week, the Georgia State Legislature debated a bill in the House that would make it necessary for a woman to carry a stillborn baby until she naturally goes into labor, just as according to Republican Representative Terry England, Pregnant cows and pigs do. Dr. Paul, I'm enraged. What do you think? Dude, you said pregnant cows and pigs in comparison to women? You are going to spend the rest of your days on the couch, dude, and your daughters will disown you. What are you thinking? (laughs) I can't believe this. And I didn't believe it, so I went to the Internet. And I found and found out where it was and who, who was reporting it. It was reported by Soraya Chemley. Okay, she is, I guess, with the New York Times. And so I think she is. If I'm mistaken on that, I apologize. But she went into further detail, and women all over the Internet are outraged. Hello. Uh, I'm going to ask my... <clears throat> <laughs> resident expert, otherwise known as my producer, what his opinion is on that. Michael, would you like to voice? I know you would because I can see you ready. Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> I ain't touching this one with a 10-foot pole, dude. <laughs> I really is rattling the internet tonight. I mean, these women are not having any sense of humor about this, and rightly so. I mean, really. Come on, guys. Do you know what you said? Like, Cows and pigs do? You have a wife? At least for the time being, you may not have soon. <laughs> she will sue you for every dime you won't have. Uh, I couldn't believe this. It's all good. It's all good. It's just amazing to me that anybody can open his mouth and his brains drop out like that. I mean, come on. It's outrageous. Oh, she says, I am a woman and I have human rights. Well, yes, you do. And, and God bless you. But... Why people do and say things like that? Where does the thinking come from? I, it's alien to me. It's like, what planet are you from? Whew. I'm glad I'm not him. That's all I can say. My job, I'm only the messenger here. I am not making any value judgments or moral judgments, but I can say that was absolutely unequivocally unacceptable. Okay? And yes, I do agree with you. That is my thinking. How could you, how could you not agree with something like that? I mean, that's just ridiculous. Well, we have a few letters tonight. I thought we'd do that for openers, and everybody's happy about that one, I'm sure. Got one here that I think you're going to... Oh, by the way, if there are any comments on this, and I'm sure there will be because (laughs) it's just too hot an item not to have. Uh, Letter to Dr. Paul. We have a caller there, Mike. Okay, just a moment. We'll have somebody on apparently responding to what I just said. We are going to go this way. We're going to hold this next letter until we hear from the caller. Hello, caller. You're aboard. Hey, Dr. Paul. This is Dr. Frida. Hello, Dr. Frida. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. I, I heard this article, and I could not believe it. It absolutely enrages me, and I wanted to call and talk to you about it. <laughs> good. Get it off your shoulders. I understand <laughs> perfectly. Wow. What about it? Well, yeah, you know, it's just phenomenal that, that you could get such a misogynistic, chauvinistic attitude 
from somebody in this modern century. I, I can't believe anybody would come up with something like that. And I am, I am absolutely confounded that that it would even hit the legislature. That just that just screams. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm terrified that it could even make it that far. And frankly, I mean, let alone the obvious fact that it could be a tremendously uh, serious medical issue to force a woman to do something like that. Oh yeah, it uh, could be deadly. That nobody, nobody, you know, called him on it, and it actually made it all the way to the legislature. Unbelievable. Can you imagine any of the other legislators in there supporting this guy? I mean, that's like, hello, divorce court, here we come. Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine anything so ignorant. What state did you say this was in? Georgia. Huh. <laughs> I that out of Arkansas, maybe, but Georgia's kind of... I thought they were a little more with the time. Oh, well, I'm, you know, it's the individual there. I mean, they're, they're, uh, that's just outrageous. Uh, it's as you said, it's misogynistic at best, and, and at worst, it's it's just poor judgment. I mean, it's crazy. It's actually uh, crazy. And as I said, well, if he has daughters, what they're going to disown him. Oh, I, I would hope so. I, I, I just wanted to, to weigh in. Thanks so much for letting me talk, Dr. Paul. You're always great at representing women's issues. I truly appreciate that, and I know many, many women out there do. Well, thank, thank you, so you Dr. Fried. I appreciate today, that. I really enjoy your show, and I appreciate your calling in and commenting on that, and I would expect nothing less from you. Well, thank you, Dr. Paul. (laughs) You have a wonderful evening, and thank you so much. Thank you for commenting. That's for openers. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more on the line after that, and I know I'm going to have the emails because guess what? This is something that's just rattling the Internet, and women are not happy about it. (laughs) You know, there's some things you just can't comment further about, and that's one of them. Well, let's go to letters. I have a letter to Dr. Paul about no self-esteem. Hey, Dr. Paul, I'm having a hard time trusting my boyfriend. Uh Uh-oh, something new. He He is an awesome man who treats me 100% better than my last boyfriend. I'm going to comment on that later. I hope your last boyfriend didn't, you know, bound you up and gag you and do, you know, mean things to you. All right, apparently, okay, you say he listens... He communicates and he shares his insights. I like that. Everything I could want and more, but the one thing, and there's always one thing, isn't there, uh, is that I'm overweight while he is just right and healthy. He can have any woman he wants, and granted, there were many women out there that have flirted and showed him interest, and now he wants, and granted, there are many women out there that show him, and now and then. And he said he's taken his clothes off with several girlfriends in the past, but I told him, We're not doing anything like that unless I have an engagement ring on my finger. He said he respected me and my choices, and he has shown me that respect many times over. How can a man of this nature, intelligent and fit, find someone like myself attractive in his eyes? I keep thinking that one day this bridge will fall while I'm standing on it and left with nothing. Help Dr. Paul. I will guarantee you that if you continue feeling this way, it's going to happen. That bridge is going to collapse because you are subconsciously going to communicate that feeling to him. And he's going to look and say, what am I doing with her? Because you made it happen. You are sabotaging yourself right now. You're talking to Dr. Tough Love, and I'm not going to play games here. I never do, and that's why you wrote to me. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop questioning yourself. He said he loves you. You think he's terrific. He listens. What more do you want? Tell me. He's gone along with saying, okay, we'll be engaged before I take my clothes off with you. I guess he has further things in mind after taking his clothes off. I mean, that would be typical. But please, don't do that yourself. In effect, you're carrying baggage forward from another relationship. Somebody treated you badly and your self-image is, and you say that yourself. You say that, I have no self-esteem. And you're right. <laughs> Stop it. Get in front of a mirror and look at yourself and say, wow, I'm really, I'm really great because I'm really good because this man cares about me. He made it evident. If you don't believe in yourself, I have news for you. Nobody else will. Got it? You're not the only person, and I'm going to give you a hard time a little bit. I mean, you maybe deserve it, but that's why you wrote to me because you know I tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. The point is that you have to believe in you. I can't use your name. We won't do that. But you have to believe in you. 
If you fail to believe in you, you're going to communicate that to him. He's going to knock that bridge down. It's over. And then you're going to be able to say, oh, I was right. Do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? Maybe you can be right and happy both. Give it a go. And get back with me and tell me how it went. You know I'm right. And please do me this favor. Don't talk to your friends. And I will tell you, if this man is as good as you say he is, don't tell your friends how good he is. They will be after him, behind your back. They do it all the time. All right? Trust no one. Got it? Good. Thank you for the letter. Well, we got off on a hot, hot item night, didn't we? All right. Had another question about lingerie. We had a request, an email about something Dr. Paul had said some time ago, and they wanted to have some additional information. Here it was. Dr. Paul, I frequently have the subject of lingerie come up. Women sometimes ask, why do men like that? It's not the real me. Well, neither is your, I'm saying to them, neither is your lipstick, eyeshadow, hair color, etc. Look at sexy nylons and heels and sexy lingeries as simply body makeup. In Europe, it's the norm, not the exception. Men are into their own fantasies. If they like it, do it. I've had women callers who say the reason they wear nylons and heels for sex is because it makes them feel sexier. This was the response I gave, and somebody wanted to hear it again. Maybe you want to hear it to, as one woman said who sent in, I just want to tell him he should appreciate what I do. Yeah, dude, you better appreciate what she does because a lot of women won't or don't, and this woman's making it interesting for you. It may hide, by the way, nylons, may hide some imperfections that they, that women think they have, and it turns their man on more good reasons. You can thank the, this is the part the last emailer wanted, you can thank the ancient Egyptians for making up, for makeup and heels. They knew that a woman's butt looked better when it had a certain lift to it. Okay, so the ancient Egyptians, you see them with the makeup around the eyes, and, and they had wooden heels. They knew when they got out of the baths at, in, in Egypt, you know, these public baths, that they looked better when they're derrieres were elevated. Uh, I could never understand why American women, uh, some women, remove their heels before they have sex. And that's true. Uh, European women don't tend to do that. Uh, yes, I know the difference. And not all American women, some. They remove their heels when they have sex, when in fact, if you happen to see any porn movies, and of course I know that none of my fans would ever, of course you would, they keep their heels on, don't they? Think about it. Watch the, watch the angles and everything that are set up by heels. At that point, they are also removing one of the very things that made them sexually attractive in the first place. The major lingerie companies know this to the tune of making hundreds of million dollars per year. Victoria's Secret. You see the ads on TV? They're all wearing sandals, aren't they? No, guess what? They're wearing heels and high ones at that. I wonder why. Hmm, what does that tell you? <laughs> Oh, what can I say? All right, we got that through the through the mill. And I need to tell you this. It's only a matter of time before everything you see in magazines, etc., and you're already seeing it, it's kind of edging in that direction, will be far, far more, I'll say, flashy, more creative, creative, quote-unquote, and certainly more seductive, which we all like. We're going to break right now, and good reason, right? This is Dr. Paul. We'll be right back after these messages. And now, back to the Dr. Paul Show. Welcome back. This is Dr. Paul. This is the Dr. Paul Show, and we have emails, too, that just came in. I haven't seen these yet, so we'll just read them cold and see what happens, and I hope there are no four-letter words in here. Here we go. I have a question for the love doctor. I need advice. I asked a girl out through Facebook message asking for a coffee, and she did not reply back. She knows that I am shy. Did you tell her? Did you tell her you were shy, or did you show it? Well, let's continue here. Next day, when I met her, she was behaving as if nothing happened, and she greeted me the same way. What does it mean, and what to do? Good question. I see this is from out of the country. Okay. First, what it means is, Take the initiative. I've said this before. Mm, are you ready for this? Faint heart never won fair lady. Got that? Faint heart never won fair lady from British Lit. 
and I will tell you that you must take the initiative. Women are known on occasion, but only on occasion and not very often, yes, very often, they will test you. That's right. I see people in the audience here who are smiling. Several of them happen to be female, and they're very well known to test you. You're getting a test, dude. You better come on strong and say, hey, how do you like your coffee, with or without cream? You like sugar in it? Don't ask her why she didn't respond to you. Then she's going to be embarrassed. She'll have to respond. She'll say, oh, oh yeah, you know. Hey, listen, next time I ask you to go for coffee, respond to me. The answer is yes, we'll go. The question is, what do you want in it? See, get right past it. Don't even, don't even give her the time of day. See, this is how you handle it. All right, you, you say, next time I'm, we're going to coffee, and by the way, since you didn't respond to me this time, you're going to buy. I mean, go right at it. Then she'll respect you. Well, who does he think he is? And I think I like him. You got that? That's how they operate. Get it? You know, you guys ought to pay me a lot of money for what I'm doing for you. I mean, you owe me. Dudes, you owe me. And I'm serious about this. Do it. I do want you to know one more thing. And you said, what does it mean? That's what it means and what to do. Take it on the chin and move on it. Don't even back off one instant. Go aggressively forward. Wow. Sounds like she's pretty cool, though, because she greeted you the same way like nothing happened. She's a piece of work. I like that. She's got a good attitude, and I can guarantee you, as, as certain as you're watching this, she is testing you, dude. That's how it is. All right, I have another one. Doc and ask Dr. Paul, dear Dr. Paul, I need advice. I have been involved with a guy for two years and seven months. Oops, 14 days, three hours and 22 minutes. No, she doesn't have that part in there. <laughs> I think she knows how long she's been going with him <laughs> in 77 seconds. He has yet to tell me that he loves me. We are not involved with anyone else. Is this a bad sign? Uh, yes, it is. Is it a bad sign? Confront him. Look, today it's a two-way street. Get right on his case. And don't whine. Don't whine. You don't tell me you love me. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't be wimpy, wimp, all right? Go right after it. Say, let me ask you something. I want you to listen to it. We're looking right in the eye. I want you to listen to me right now. I've been going with you for two years, seven months, 22 hours, whatever. And you tell him, I want answers now. Do you love me? And then you say, how much? Don't just say, do you love me? That's easy. You'll say, yes. How much? And then why? Okay? Put him right on the spot. Right? You know, like a bug. You got him right there. He's got to answer. Right under a microscope. He's, he, you see, if you say, do you love me? Well, yeah, uh, well, I, it, uh, uh, you know, no. Don't stop there. You got to move on beyond there. Remember, behavioral psychology, that's what I'm the doctorate in. Okay? You have to press the point. It's just, like, it's just like in a strategic invasion. Let's say that you're General George S. Patton, and you're going to take over a certain strategic area. What, are you going to fall back and be in a defensive position? No, the attacker always has the advantage. So you press the point. You go right, it's time for me to clear the air. Okay? This is it. I need to know one thing. Do you love me? How much do you love me? And why do you love me? Don't stop with do you love me. That's not good enough. Nail him. Oh, he's going to be sorry if he answers wrong. I can tell. I like your attitude, though. That's good. You wouldn't have sent this to me if you didn't have some idea that Dr. Toffolabo wasn't going to come back in a very, very tough fashion. Right? Right. Good. Tell me what happens. I like that. Well, we're going to go to some others here. We've got a blogs and blogs full and emails full. And here's one right here to giving it a second chance. Um. Dr. Paul, please help. I trust your advice above all others. About eight months ago, I ended a long time, five year long distance relationship, okay, with a woman I care deeply about. I ended a long distance relationship of five years with a woman I care deeply about. I can see what you're writing. If you care deeply about it, why did you end it? Okay. We've known each other for about eight years, five of them romantically. We met on the Internet. We've been through a lot together. I've helped her through a divorce and such. During that eight months, she entered into another relationship that failed. Oops. 
Now we have decided to give it another chance, but she has put up a wall for fear that it might happen again. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let me understand this. <laughs> she entered into another relationship. You're back together, and she's put a wall up because she's afraid it might happen again. She's right. It will happen again. I guarantee it. And she's going to do it again to you. And she'll do it a third and fourth time because people don't change. I know it isn't going to happen again. How do you know that? I guarantee you that it will. I guarantee you that it will. That's right. That's a chance I'll take. I'll go to Vegas and, and put money on it. People don't change. But she's unsure. Of course she's unsure. She's unsure because she knows she's her, the level of her stability. <laughs> the problem is I tend to overanalyze and discuss what happened to make her feel more secure. And it frustrates her to no end. <laughs> All I can think of is Alan on Two and a Half Men. Okay, <laughs> it sounds like that. No, you're not, but I'm saying that you don't want to overanalyze. That's not the problem here. How can I bring down the wall yet not frustrated with discussing it all the time? Uh, we're meeting for the first time in about three weeks very soon. Dropper. Close the door, walk away. I kid you not, that's the healthiest thing that you can do for your mental state of mind. I kid you not. Walk away. That is the only way to handle it. Close the door. And guess what? I have a, I have a, a flash for you here. When you do that, and I, if I were you, and if, if it were me, I can close doors. That's it. Have a nice life. I'm gone. <laughs> Done it. Guess what? They call back and cry on the phone, and they need you. They want you. A lot of that's because they want to satisfy their own ego and thinking they can get you back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Once it's over, close the door. Gone. Done. Life goes on. Easier said than done? Not really. I can do it. You can do it. Dr. Toplove is going to refer that same data to you that is of importance in your life. If you don't do that, you're going to continue doing that pattern on and on, not only with her, but with others. Once she found somebody else, that was the time to pull the plug. Okay? Get her off life support. It's done. Gone. Life goes on. And that, and that may seem, you know, tough. And it is. And you need to do that for yourself, for you. Not for her, not for anybody, but you. Because you're suffering here. I can tell from this letter how you feel. You're hurting. Not worth it. And if you said, as you did, that she's unsure, <laughs> she's not unsure. She's sure. She's sure she's going to do it again. And she feels guilty about hurting you. That's why she put the wall up. Okay. That's what it is. It's defensive in nature, but at the same time, she's allowing you to delude yourself. So get out of that big river in Egypt, you know the one, denial, and dump her. I hate, and it sounds terrible to say to dump somebody, but <laughs> there's a point in time when you have to do it. Lock her down. It's it. Done. Over. Kaput. Bine. When, when I get letters from sociologists and psychologists and, and marriage counselors, it, it, some of them are so wimpy, I can't believe it. I'm not going to wimp out on you. If you want to hear some other answer, go for it. See them. Talk to them. I'm not going to do that. I don't have to. Do it my way, and you'll win. If you don't, you'll lose. And it's not a, in this case, it's not just this woman. It's a pattern that you're creating in your life that you're going to do over and over and over and over with all women until it's all over and you have no place to go. All right? Trust me on that one. So saith Dr. Paul. Forsaking all others. Okay, this is an answer to something that happened that I think you might like to hear. A uh, funny story. <laughs> this was a, a blog that someone sent to me from their, their blog. Okay. A reader of my blog sent me this story. I just had to share with her. I was walking down the street when I was recently accosted by a particularly dirty and shabby looking homeless woman who asked me for a couple of dollars for dinner. I took out my wallet and gave her $10, $10 and asked, if I give you this money, will you buy some chocolate with it instead of dinner? No, I had to stop eating chocolate years ago, the homeless woman told me. Will you use it to go shopping instead of buying food? No, I don't waste time shopping, the homeless woman said. I need to spend all my time trying to stay alive. Will you spend this on a beauty salon instead of food? She said, are you nuts? I haven't had my hair done in 20 years. 
well, I'm not going to give you the money. Instead, I'm going to take you out for dinner with my with my husband and me tonight, woman. Okay. The homeless woman was shocked. Won't your husband be furious with you for doing that? I know I'm dirty, and I probably smell pretty disgusting. I said, that's okay. It's important for him to see what a woman looks like after she has given up shopping, hair appointments, and chocolate. <laughs> well, I guess that'll teach him, won't it? <laughs> we, we, I didn't like that one, Mike. You going to comment on that one, or are you going to wimp out on me? I know you better than that. You'll never wimp out. No, I, I, I like that you one. You like that, yeah. huh? It'll teach him a lesson, won't it? Well, go ahead, honey. Uh, go ahead and get your hair fixed and, uh, you know, get, have the chocolate and whatever else. Go shopping, right? Right, right. And, and I, I'll uh, cast my opinion on that one because now my girlfriend isn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love to set you up, Mike. That just works for me. All right. I recently received a question. This is another one that came off from a lady who asked Dr. Paul if cyber sex is considered to be adultery. <laughs> I can't handle this anymore. Is cyber sex considered to be adultery? Okay, let me continue. No touchy, no feely, no adultery. Okay, that's how I see it. If you don't touch, you don't feel there's no adultery. Am I wrong? No comment. Okay. It is my understanding that it, it is my understanding that in fact, and not in my opinion, but in most states, it is considered to be adultery in most states. Explicit one-on-one -on -one sexual communication with a member of the opposite or same sex certainly qualifies. The lady is married and is having cyber sex with another man that she has intimately known in her past. Ah, that's different. She had previously known him intimately, and now she's having cyber sex, which to me is an oxymoron, but okay. Does it really take a rockin' scientist to figure this out? Even if you had sex in the past with this person, it still qualifies according to, the, to a law firm that, that was contacted as adultery and can be considered to be grounds for divorce in the event that a prenup is involved with an adultery clause, and I am told they all have unless they are specifically deleted, the injured party has no obligation of any sort, including financial uh, or other, to the other party. Divorce could ensue without question. Porn sites, on the other hand, oh, by the way, this, and this is the interesting part. Porn sites, on the other hand, are not considered to be adultery since there is no one-on-one -on -one sexual communication or contact. So, if you're going, if you're going to... <laughs> If you're going to use the computer for your pleasure, sexual pleasure, be sure that you go to porn sites and not to cyber sex with one individual because then they can't divorce you on the basis of being, you know, unfaithful. The other party may not like it or they may enjoy it too, that is the porn site, but it is not grounds for divorce, okay, unless, it, unless your legal agreement particularly addresses that action well this was a burning question what kind of people are blogging on dr paul's site and who are you who would have guessed we just because dr paul's initials are prv really true my shirts are all monogrammed with prv that's perv does that mean that everyone has to be a perv too sounds i've created a monster maybe because dr paul makes no moral or value judgments Everyone feels really good about sharing their feelings. Oh, my. That's out there. <laughs> yes, Mike. You better be careful. People are going to replace Dr. Tough Love with Dr. Perv. They already have. That's right. They already have. Have you seen some of that? Dr. Perv. I'm so happy about that. Well, you know, pay his advertise. What can I say? <laughs> oh, my. How would you like to go through military school with a name like V-Horn? I mean, it comes off V-Horn, very horny, V-Horny. It's on and on and on without sup. So the only thing you can do is prove it to them, right? <laughs> Why fight it? <laughs> We're going to break right now. This is Dr. Paul. We'll be right back after these messages. And now back to the Dr. Paul Show. Oh, welcome back. We're having way too much fun tonight. All right. We're... <laughs> We're not going to stop now. <laughs> We've just gotten started. <laughs> this is the best of the best. All right, here's some more. Let's hear it for getting a reel about where you are. A recent listener reader has this to say about a woman he stopped dating. And this came in, and I'm just... People sometimes write just to make statements without asking questions, but I like to comment on them. 
I had dated a woman who had two teenage daughters. She was pathetic. She tried to talk like them and dress like them and be their buds. She was living her own teenage years all over again vicariously through her daughters. He went on to say she was 47 and he really liked her at first, but that turned him off. He went on. I am not interested, quote unquote, in someone who acts like an adolescent. I replied, of course he isn't. And that is the type of scenario that all sitcoms are made of. <laughs> he might try to talk to her, but I got the impression that it really wasn't worth it to him. If he had brought this up, it would have been more trouble than it was worth. There were there are more people out there who have already gotten through the teenage experience and are not looking forward to doing it again. Oh, my. In short, stay away from the arrested development cases, I told him. Ladies, are you listening to what this man is saying? And I really mean this. If you're doing this, ladies, this is a bad idea. By the way, he said her mode of dress was silly looking since she was wearing clothes for teenagers. Wow, I'm impressed, right? Not. Another item came in from a female friend of a lady who has put on a few pounds. The weight gain has made her already short skirts even shorter. Oh boy, this woman had no mercy. This is something that was topic. I'm, I'm topically you know, reviewing this for you because <laughs> it's so funny. So again, this lady is in her mid-40s. The friend um, <laughs> said that her weight gain has been in the gut and in the butt. Women can be vicious, can't they, about each other? Ooh. Her skirts are so short, she said, it's laughable. People are laughing at her behind her back. <clears throat> I'll bet. The letter went on to say she is too stubborn about it to listen to her friend's suggestions. Dr. Paul, what is your response? And I said, we all gain weight and go on diets, and we really know how we look in clothes that become ill-fitting and too short. We look like clowns. That was my response. Tell her to take a good look at herself. And be critical of what she sees. Better yet, take some pictures of her. It won't be pretty. Try some videos, especially from the back. You know, wide load, short skirt, <laughs> that type of thing. Unfortunately, she isn't that big river in Egypt, you know, denial. Isn't that sweet, huh? Aren't they sweet? I don't blame them. I mean, it, there's a point in time when you have to establish where you are in life. If you're 30... Don't try to look like you're 25. If you're 40, don't like, look like you're 30. If you're somewhere in between, it always works to look and be classy. Put some class in your act. You, and by the way, don't do the tattoos, the body piercings, or the breast implants. The three things that turn people off most are those three things. Now, guys, if you're getting a breast implant, you've got a whole different outcome situation i'm not even going there but if you if you <laughs> don't look so shocked in there my audience out here is looking huh that's right no breast implants ladies no piercings and no tattoos and by the way here the latest about tattoos you probably have uh it's a bad situation where the tattoo ink is causing severe liver damage and oftentimes hepatitis c and piercings nice move infections in the navel and infections in the tongue are just horrible and they're difficult to get rid of mercy is one of the infections that occur and that's a tough one to kill well so it goes we'll pass this other one up it's just too ribald just too ribald whatever that means okay <clears throat> let's see a letter oh i love this one this one I, I came up with that was a letter that that we had in the archives and i had to bring it up because it's just too good to to pass it up and it's true okay we're going to go through this one very shortly <clears throat> dear dr paul i need advice my mom has alzheimer's and lives with me she walks in on me and my boyfriend having sex and just stands there i'm only the messenger you can't make this stuff up <laughs> and doesn't leave it really doesn't bother me that she stands there so is it wrong that <laughs> we just keep banging away <laughs> She really won't remember the next day. So is it a big deal? I feel sorry for the lady. I kid you not. I, this is an email. And I, I don't make moral or value judgments for anybody. Uh, now, if she had a video cam and she put it on the Internet, that'd be a whole other story, okay? I would suggest that you might want to lock your door, maybe lock her door. So, you know, sometimes they... they 
wander. You don't want to do that. I mean, I like your attitude. You've got a great sense of humor. I only under, don't understand, and, and your boyfriend must be something else because if, <laughs> if he can keep, keep going with your mother standing there, <laughs> that's, that's a real accomplishment. Would you guys agree with that in the student booth there? Hmm? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm yeah, a yeah, he's, he, he's, do, he's a right? trooper. Yep, he's, he's, he's a he's a, he's a team guy. player. Put it that way. <laughs> he's a team player. Yeah. Okay. So much for that. Well, we're getting down to the bottom line here. We're going to go into uh, our interview with our guy that uh, is going to tell us all about that new security system. This is Doctor Paul. We'll be right back after these messages. back to the dr paul show hi welcome back this is dr paul i have the very great opportunity to introduce you with a man who is of the hour patrick highland who is going to tell us about a new security device and i want you to remember this dr paul does not under any circumstance endorse or promote a product that he does not believe in unless proven otherwise and that has happened in the past at this point in time i can tell you that this product is probably the very best available at the most competitive price yet. So our new advertiser, our spokesperson here, Patrick Highland. How are you tonight, Patrick? I'm doing great, Doc. I appreciate you having me on the show. You have a very interesting show today. A lot of fun. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Made your day, huh? It really did. I'll well, tell you what. It's so important to be secure because, like, this, somebody gets in your computer and shows videos of you that you don't want to have happen. I mean, you've got to watch yourself. What can you do with this company? What's the name of it? What's the what's the deal on it? And how can they get discounts? So, no, have it's, at it. It, it's uh, for your show. It's great. You have women asking dating information right. and guys also, and you want to protect yourself. Sure. You want to protect your identity. It's one of the leading crimes in our country right now. Unfortunately, right up there, and we can protect it for you. We got a great identity theft protection program, and we also have a computer backup system program, so you don't lose your things due to a computer crash. They back it all up for you. And the great thing is, it's only $5 a month for both what? products. Yeah, $5 a month. You've heard of other products out there. I can't mention their names. Well, how good can it be if it's only $5 a month? Well, we're, I'm going to ask these questions yeah. that you'll ask. Okay. Well, realistically, Doc, it's $10 a month. But because of your show, we're giving a special promotion to all you listeners out there. To do I have do to this. pay the difference? No, oh, I won't okay. do that right. to you. You're sure good people. <laughs> we won't put that on you. <laughs> I can see my bill come in now. <laughs> I need to get this because I truly know that it's important. And some of these other ones out there are very, very expensive. It, they are. They're charging 25 to $50 a month. Computer backup wow. can be a lot more expensive than that. We just have tailor-made a product to make it streamlined for the people, hit the masses on the Internet, on radio shows. We're going to go on TV. We're going to get our name out there and do a lot of good for a lot of people. Well, I'm pleased that you uh, went to the Dr. Paul Show, and I think, one of the reasons you said you did is because 80% of our viewers and listeners happen to be females, and they really need it. And let's face it, maybe their incomes, maybe they have kids or whatever, they have to do it at a, at a, at a price that's available that you know is doable. And this is, not the, this is the case here. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the case. Well, you're 100% right. And the, the other good part about it is women on this type of product will tell their husband we're getting it. Okay. Or if they're not married. And if they're not married, they're going to get it. Where guys... They say, oh, that identity, that's no one's ever going to bother me. Oh, nothing's going to happen to my computer. Where women will say, dear, I don't want our pictures all over the place. Get it. Honey, I'm protecting my idea. You are, too. We right. don't need to miss work over this. We don't need to get aggravated trying to recover identity and right. have a lot of bills and a lot of credit issues. It's just not worth it, especially for a simple $5 a month to have your computer backed up. Well, and what about idea. legal fees? What if, what if somebody gets into it? Is it going to keep them from getting there, or if, can they get into it? What are you going to do? What's going to happen is if, if it is into, you report it, and we stop it right there and take care of it from that point forward. Well, will they need an attorney? No, they will not need an attorney. Do you take care of that? Yes. Hmm, excellent. So that, have you had experience with this before? I mean, have you, have you found people that are, yeah. that are stopped by this? I presume you must have computer banks, et cetera, that... Exactly. We have okay. all the computer backup systems. I mean, we're going to go all over the country, and then we're looking to go all over the world, Doc, down the road. And I know you get a lot of emails, texts, blogs across the country. So And out of the country, too. And out of the country. So that's it's going to be something. So yeah. people in the U.S., Canada, 
throughout the world can actually do it now. Yes, it that's up. correct. And they can get a discount if they're going through Ask Dr. Paul. Right. right. They have to go to your site, www.askdrpaul.com, hit Get Protected, and then they're good to go. Well, Patrick, I, I don't want to digress here. We're not doing an infomercial, but right. I understand you used to play football, right? Yes, sir. Yes, I did. Football. I went up to Canada to play football. Yep. You were Canadian League and very, very effective, as I recall. And you have had a good experience, good career, and, and you're involved with this now. And I know that you would involve yourself with something yeah. that wasn't ethical. No question about it. I know the two owners of the company. They started it. They've been working on this for over 18 months, Paul. They have every, all the system put into place. They're going into large corporations with ten right. and 20,000 employees. Oh, that's Because the owners want to put it in there so their employees don't miss work. Well, it makes sense. It really does. What can you lose? And you, it's very very minimal cost. And right. It's another perk for their employees. Just another way to retain your employee group. So it's a great program for a lot of reasons. Well, it's not only a great program, but I like the discount. You know, Dr. Paul, he's very frugal. I've been told that. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. In our economic times right now, and we have to be. Somebody told me recently, Dr. Paul, you're so tight, your shoes squeak. And I said, no, no, let's, let's not have this. But there's something I want to call your attention. You have your link on AskDrPaul.com. Correct. And you also have it on IRNBroadcast.com, right? So if somebody goes in to listen to one of the shows from the past or whatever, they can pick it up there, right? Yeah, that is correct. All they have to do is, though, they have to go to your website, www askdrpaul.com or they and then they're going to or i and broadcast right. and they'll see it and then just hit get protected and they have to put in the drpaul code drpaul code real okay. simple and then they're going to get the discount well you did a good job thank you yeah no i appreciate it i understand that you used to broadcast sports yes you got yeah. that voice well, i appreciate like that, that doctor bro. no yeah, i enjoy yeah. it i'd like to do it again i'm looking to possibly do that in the future. Well, I don't see why not. You certainly, in fact, I recall having heard you several years ago that you were doing a, a sports show and it was very effective. Yeah, here locally in Tampa wow. on Saturday mornings. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Well, I really appreciate you being here and I think that it's a very excellent program. I don't endorse something unless I truly believe in it. I'm going to go into it, of course, and I'm highly interested in my safety and security. Believe me, you don't want to see some of the stuff I get. <laughs> Some people called me something recently, and I said, oh, I'll be careful. I didn't know who my father was. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you just want to protect yourself. That's right. the key. Hey, Patrick, thanks again Doctor, for being aboard. Doctor, appreciate it, my man. Great show indeed. as always. As always, this is Dr. Paul. May your fantasies of today be your realities of tomorrow. <laughs>